Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Signalis. This is episode 8. Last time we hooked up that tape we found to the broadcast system and then played it for Falka, who gave us a key, indirectly. And I discovered that the post boxes are in fact those kind of like red stacked metal boxes that we saw early on. The ones that I kind of dismissed as being like a server bank or whatever. Not an important detail, but those are in fact post boxes, so we need to go back up to the sixth floor and use our key. We also did some exploring with the flashlight. I don't know if we hit everywhere that was dark. I think we did. And I did go back and uh, grab the rest of those items from the star dorm. So we're not quite done with this area yet, because we still have a few doors that we haven't open up we need to find keys for, like the library, but I think we're almost done with this area. However, some of the things I've heard, without again really being spoilers, do make it sound like there's still quite a bit left for us to see, even if our current layout we've been given tells us that there's not really much else beyond where we are now except the mine. And I have a feeling it'll have something to do with that gate that Falka's diary mentioned. Some kind of eldritch doorway to somewhere else, potentially. So is it right here? I just saw more of them on the wall, but yeah, this thing here. I don't know if you could have examined this previously. Let's see. No, it doesn't give you a description or anything. But I guess if I had actually gone to this spot, it would have showed me this, and that I'd known that there were post boxes here, but they didn't look like anything that was worth searching before, so I didn't even check. Okay, there's a library key. On the eighth floor. Okay, well, just go back down. There's been a lot of back and forth in this area, and I'm sure that probably contributed to people complaining about backtracking and inventory limits, but honestly... You get around here so quickly that I don't think it really counts as annoying backtracking. You know, there's multiple different ways to get up and down, and nothing is too far away from the door. Okay, the library's down there. Probably would have been faster to go down the lift rather than the ladder. I do wish we had some kind of distraction item. You know, something we could throw to get them to move away. I think maybe we'll just go through here. Now, I should probably deposit my flashlight, but we might need it in this library area. So I'm going to hold on to it until we get in there. But we're actually doing pretty good on healing items now that I picked up the rest of the ones we found. So I'm a little less worried. In the last episode, I kind of felt like maybe we were getting ourselves into a bad spot with our save. Where I was kind of burning important items. Oh, and we got someone who's still alive over there. Mina. Okay, so I think Mina was the boss that we fought. Yeah, with the big armored suit. Don't think we've heard very much about them before. Mine in our bite. Nuclear Technic. Hosik Hosiker Heights Replica. Mina. Mining Nuclear Tech High Security Replica Mina. Okay, that explains why she has the big suit then. Type. Generation 3 Industrial Specialist. Frame. Biomechanical with high security reinforced armor plated servo shell. Height 260 centimeters. When it comes to dangerous cargo, heavy machinery, and hazardous environments, no other model rivals the MNHR units with their high security power armor bodies. Even in lethal radiation, under crushing pressure, and in zero G, they keep their calm demeanor and show exemplary teamwork. Despite their hulking bodies underneath their face shields, a standard Generation 3 cranial construction can be found. 
making maintenance and social interfacing as easy as with any other replica model. Please note that the MNHR neural pattern is not suited for combat use. For combat applications, the SAPR variant should be used, which employs a combat-capable persona in the same frame. For more information, see Schwer Antipanzer Replica Schnapper. So, did we fight one of those variants, or was she just using like a mining tool on us? Um, alignment error, use manual controls. What is this? It looks like some kind of uh, archive machine. Okay, the controls, like, don't really work. Oh, there's blocks. That's what those are. Those are not the things that we have to remove. Those are actually <laughs> obstacles. Okay, there's something over here, maybe? I can't tell what we're trying to get. There's a book here. I think that's a book. It might be another block. And one here. Or are we just trying to take out what's already in this thing? Because it doesn't look like it's holding anything right now. But yeah, this is one of those puzzles where we can only kind of... It's like a sliding ice puzzle. We can only move it to one of these. We can't actually move it to the spot we want it to be. We have to kind of use the limitations. I don't even know what we're trying to get, though. So I'll leave that alone for the moment. Got a repair patch. Do we need that? Nope, we are actually in blue health. Replica Known Issues Part 4. Classified Information, Commander Eyes Only. Previous experience with this replica model has given us insight into the irregularities in their behavior that stem from the original neural pattern used for this unit. Due to the sensitive nature of this information, this document should be destroyed after reading. KLBR Great care should be given to Calibris. Their neural patterns are very unstable, and their bioresonance module makes them very susceptible to influence from others. We did fight, or deal with another Calibri last episode, where we had to do the uh, hot and cold hacking minigame with the radio. Like most bioresonant individuals, Calibris will often subconsciously create an emotional feedback loop, imitating and then broadcasting the emotions of those around them, acting as a sort of amplifier. While they are trained to recognize and disengage this behavior, already unstable units can sometimes spiral into persona degradation. Due to their bioresonant connection, neural pattern development in Calibris varies less than in other models. The constant exchange of memories and emotions between units of a cadre acts as a safety net that buffers extreme changes. However, once a majority of units in a cadre degrade, they will drag remaining units down with them. Because of this, it is important to decommission Calibri units instantly when they begin to degrade. For Persona stabilization, Calibri should have access to a well-stocked library. Alright. Well, what does this replica have to say for herself, if anything? Who are you? You're not one of our staff. The others, they've changed. We no longer sing in unison. So she hasn't gone off the deep end yet, but the other ones that we've been running into were, I guess, part of her cadre. I used to be able to see into their minds. We were as one. Together, we guided them all. But now, I can't understand their thoughts anymore. I've never been so alone before. They're still together, and I am here, outside, and they won't let me in. I cannot stand their song anymore. This is the only place where I don't have to hear them. This is the only place I'm safe. Okay. I can't go on like this. I wish I had become like the others, too. At least then, I wouldn't be alone. I hate this. Well, like every other living replica we've encountered, we can't really do anything for her. <laughs> We're just going to leave her here. 
All right, so I'm not actually sure what we're trying to get here, but I feel like there's got to be something we need. What about this book? Is that a book? I mean, that right there looks like something we need. It kind of looks like the spine of that copy of the King in Yellow that we saw in the dream or whatever it is at the beginning. So to get that, we need to get here. Right? And then just go up. Wait. <laughs> How did that get from there to here without us actually having to take it out? Okay, pick up the astrolabe. So we need that for the safe. And there is the logo for the game. Strange clockwork-like dial mechanism with astronomical symbols on the front. The back of the device looks like it might slot into a bigger mechanism. Yep. I'm just curious what information we might be able to get from looking at this. Because obviously we're going to need... to go down to the... like, solar display. In order to get the combination from in here... but... What do we need to infer from this? It has three dials on it. One is filled in, one is hollow, and one looks like a pause symbol. I have a feeling the names of the planets are going to be important. Well, I feel like until we actually put this thing into the safe, I won't be able to tell what the combination is or how it works. So we just need to go around to the other side. Okay, these two are here again. Manage to duke him. Juke him. And then from here, we just need to go up. Oh boy. Alright. Wait, was this the right room? Yeah, this is the shrine box. So we put this thing on. Okay. Never mind, I have to click on it. Okay. So we can turn these. I guess we have to know the distance from each other. So, star, planet, pause, other planet. There are like some cards on the table that look relevant. No, can't really look around. Hmm. He didn't really have any useful insight because I don't think he ever succeeded at opening the box. Wow, I like how turning the flashlight off <laughs> set them off that time. So you can kind of weave between them, but it's a little hard to tell exactly where they're going to swing. Okay, so there's the star. So I'm going to wait until that is vertical. Um, I mean, that's not actually that helpful, come to think of it. But if I look at it in reverse, right? So that high mat here is the top of the dial. 
That would mean the second one is directly below it. And Lang is like slightly off to the side? Hmm. I mean, they look like they're basically in equal orbit. You know, they're all lined up and they stay like that. Hmm. But then there's also a star on the map. Like a, not the star next to High Mat, but an actual star in the center, which I assume is, you know, the star here. I'm not sure what the pause would be, though. Or the two. Would that just be the second planet, Veneta? Because that is off to the side, the left side of these planets here. I feel like this might be another puzzle where I have to draw <laughs> what the puzzle looks like and then try to figure it out. Alright, they managed to get me that time. But I really don't want to be going back and forth here because I'm going to get hit more and more the more times we do this. Okay. So, I would think that this in the center is the sun. So, we have the star or the, you know, the twinkle. We have filled circle. We have the number two, presumably. And then we have, like, a, a hexagon, I guess? So, that might be a useful clue. I definitely did not draw a hexagon, but that's fine. And then we have possibly the sun, big old circle in the middle. So now I have to try to fucking interpret <laughs> this in a useful way. I think maybe that's one issue I have with some of the puzzles in this is that it's not even always clear the mechanics of the puzzle rather than just the solution. Like, I saw other people talking about that puzzle with the water. Or, not the water, with the, the gas and the oxygen. And assuming that if you went to the right, it would turn it up. Because that's, you know, that's intuitive. That's how most dials work with, like, volume and everything, right? You turn it to the right, you're turning it up. You turn it to the left, you're turning it down. But that puzzle is the opposite. And I can't really remember, I'm kind of using Silent Hill as a uh, comparison marker here because this game obviously takes a lot of influence from Silent Hill, even to the point of having a bunch of shots in the cutscenes from Silent Hill. So that seems like a valid thing to compare, but I can't remember really any puzzles in Silent Hill where you can't tell what the puzzle even wants you to do in order to try to solve it. And I find that in this game there have been, like, two or three puzzles where I just can't really tell what it's trying to get me to do until I keep messing around with it. Okay, now, the hexagon, I don't really see. The only thing I can think of is that these symbols are actually on the posters that are scattered around. And if that's the case, that's kind of annoying because I don't fucking remember A, where any of them are, and B, what was on any of them. 
I mean, I would think the two is the second planet, right? Veneta. Which is to the left. So I'm going to try putting an arrow here. So that's to the left of High Mat. Um, I guess High Mat I'm going to use as my centerpiece because it has the uh, most obvious orbit. But you see here, like, I mean, the planets don't orbit in the exact same rotation. Or at the same rate, because that's not how planets work, right? So... The relative positions change, which means I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to assume is the default position. So I'm not really sure how useful this thing is. But yeah, uh, I, I don't know that there's any useful hints looking at this thing, aside from exact positions relative to what exactly? I'm not sure. Uh, so I guess now I have to run around to every fucking room and try to find the posters. Which is not something I want to do, but I'm not sure we have a choice. I knew those would serve some kind of purpose, though, considering they were everywhere. One of them was in, like, one of the dark rooms. <sighs> and obviously half of them are not going to actually be useful for this puzzle, because... We're not using the full solar system. We're only using the relevant ones. Okay, I think one of them is up here. Nope, never mind. There is nothing in here. I'm going to be very disappointed when this is, like, not even actually relevant to the puzzle. And I just waste a bunch of my time looking for these things. Okay, there isn't one in here. There isn't one in here. I'm trying to remember if we saw those only when we got down to this area, or if it was before we fell. Because if it was before we fell, then there's no... There's no way to get to it now. bedroom, the study, uh, there's nothing in there. We looked in the Falca room, so I guess that's everything for this floor. I wish I knew how consistent the enemies resetting thing is, because sometimes it seems like they do completely reset their position, and other times they're suddenly standing in the exact same spot when you come through a door. And I think it might have to do with the number of doors you go through. Oh, okay. That's not blocked. I thought that was blocked. But yeah, I think it's based on the number of doors you go through. It might just be based on certain rooms, though. Like, you know, most rooms reset, but not all of them. Like here, she was still in the same position waiting for me. And I think that's because I didn't have another door to go through. Now, they don't stay alerted when you go through a door, it's just that they immediately aggro again if you come out and they're right in front of you. Where the hell are all these posters? I feel like we saw them everywhere, and now I can't find a single one. 
That's not a real door. That's not a real door. Alright. Finally found one of them. Yeah. Well, we already knew that, obviously, was the star. <laughs> so that one is not helpful. Oh, there's a full heal over there. Okay, if I can use this table to get around her. Need her to come... Nope. nope. Come on. Nope, nope. I need you to come down here. Yep, that's good. Now I'm going to run around and grab this. Very nearly get clubbed for it. Alright, there's another one there. That's a triangle, so we don't need that one. I feel like I should write that down just to process of elimination if we find enough of these things. Triangle is Kitez. Now, you could do this in-game as well using the photo tool if you didn't want to actually sketch these out. But I think sketching it out is probably easier for me. Went in there. Dining room, rolling shutter. Uh, we can check the archive. Oh, there's another one of you here. Yep. Bunch of them in there. Don't think there are any enemies in here. Okay, so yeah, Veneta is to the two. Like I thought. So, Veneta, which is the maybe Earth planet. But I still don't really understand, even when we know which planet is referred to, how we're supposed to know what orientation they're in. Great, I'm gonna have to waste my health now gonna go up <laughs> now I am dripping blood give it a second it'll start to heal this is the transmitter room uh, nothing in here right I mean if I miss any items this will give us a chance to maybe find them Uh, shotgun shells. That's not a door. Alright. Managed to dodge that hit, though, so not too big of a deal. Hmm. You know, it seems like enemies actually will reset. Like, they literally will walk back to their positions if you are not on that screen. So maybe that's all it is. Is if I wait long enough, they will just walk back they don't get, like, unloaded. Alright. I haven't been up here for a while. So, we know two of the planets, but I need to know at least one more, I think, before I have enough information to then guess what we need to do with that information. Also, are there floor goblins in here? Because something woke up. Yeah, there is. I forget which unit those are. But it was the one that we read about really liking to hide in like, maintenance spaces. I just I remember one of those posters is in one of these hallways. Maybe it was up here. Hmm. 
No, that's fine. I mean, like, we literally can't go anywhere else, so... I would hope all of the relevant information is available. Didn't I just go to every room? Well, I guess I'll save. I definitely remember seeing more of those posters than the ones we just examined. But yeah, nothing in here. We can't go back up any higher. I'm trying to remember where the one in the hallway was. I think it was one of the lower hallways. Like one of the ones on the the lower half of one of these floors. But I don't remember which one. Oh, there's one right here. Walked right past it. This is Buyan. Now, I would have assumed that this wouldn't have included the Imperial planets. Like, they might have skipped over those ones, but this proves that that is not the case. Okay, so we have Buyan, we have Heimdall, and Veneta. I don't remember if it's called Heimdall. I didn't write it down because... We already know which one that is. Uh, but that leaves with the filled-in one. I don't suppose we kept notes of that. I'm going to feel really dumb if we did. But I kind of assumed that we didn't. Oh, fuck, we did. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Veneta... Says, Yan. Hmm. Or maybe we didn't keep notes of all of them. I feel like we found all of them already, but maybe, I don't know, it wasn't recording those before? Because, yeah, they don't seem to be showing up in here. And that just loops. Hmm. Maybe I just wasn't examining them? Yeah, that was just what told us about the stars in the first place. So, uh, I guess we didn't waste time, because I still need to find that last one. I wonder if maybe that was something that was patched? Like, those weren't recorded before, but because you need them for this puzzle, the dev <laughs> decided to patch it so that it does keep track of them, but not retroactively. I just noticed that there's a healing item over there. Uh, I feel like I could potentially get it by luring them all in a circle around this room, but is it worth it? Because that's a full heal. I don't suppose I could... No, yeah, the main star unit will see me because she has really good eyesight. I don't suppose it's worth it to try and sneak past. Other thing is, I think they might be able to hit you at the same time. Like, there's no invincibility frames after you get hit. Because I think I just got hit by both of them at the same time. Yeah, there's the hole where we jump down. Well, we really didn't lose any progress there. But where the hell are these other posters then? 
I definitely need to keep the shot or the flashlight. Deposit that though, and I'll deposit the injector. All right, so that was the sixth floor. Let's go down to seven again. Gotta keep a closer eye out for posters. Pretty sure there's none in here, though. Because there's no... Yeah, there's, like, no wall space on the northern wall. And that's the only one where you can see posters. Is the south-facing walls. None here. I think what might have happened, the reason we don't have them recorded, is because I might have searched them and then died. And then, you know, went, okay, those are just world building, so we don't need to search them again. That's the star. There's nothing else down there. There's no, nothing on the wall up there. Hi, Matt. Nothing down there. Hmm. I mean, we know three of them, so I could try to process of elimination, but I would think that the info is around. we check this room? I thought we did. Yeah. Bookshelves, which are no good. And nothing up there. I think maybe one of these was, like, on a table or something. That's just a pillow. I feel like one of them was in a not obvious place rather than just on the wall. But we need these in order to even attempt this puzzle. I don't know if it's possible to get through this room without getting detected, though. Okay, that's right in front of me. Oh, there is one in here. Or is that one of the... Nope, that's the Falca poster. He doesn't have one in his room. Unsurprisingly, he doesn't have a useful hint in the room with the puzzle. Nothing else in here. There isn't one in here. Well, I gotta say that this is not one of my uh, preferred puzzles so far. The, hey, remember this completely unimportant seeming detail lying around in the environment? Because it'll be very important later. Oh, okay. I don't think we saw this one before. I don't think I actually noticed it. Maybe I did. Because I think I remember it saying that, hey, isn't this the one from our flashback? So Rot Front is our last puzzle piece and then we have to figure out what the fuck we're gonna do with that because again I don't know how we're supposed to know where they go relative to each other because
They don't orbit in a fixed rate. And it's not like one of the dials is itself fixed to give us an idea. of, you know, where the other ones need to be relative to it. I would like to get out of this area, though, because I'm getting a little sick of having the exact same enemies aggro on me every time and having to do a loop around them. All right, how's my health looking? My health is looking bad. So I'm going to use an ejector because we have three... I guess I'll save again. Not that we've done anything useful in this entire episode yet, but I think this is one of those transitionary episodes where we just need to figure out a puzzle so that we can get to some new stuff. I'm on the wrong floor. I went up here because I didn't want to have to run around those enemies downstairs. I'm just going to wait here for a minute and see if they actually do clear off. Yep, they did. We're going to ride this back down. So... Now that we know what we need to know, we need to figure out where they are relative to each other, I guess. So... Veneta... is a little bit to the left. Rotfront is very to the left. I'm thinking maybe it wants us to go high mat at the very top because that at least gives us a kind of fixed position to work from. You know, we can look at where the other planets are when high mat is at the top. Because otherwise, I don't know what we can do. We can't, like, stop the dial you know, there's no way to break it. So... When High Mat is all the way at the top, Rot Front is in the bottom left, like, kind of 8 o'clock area. And Veneta... Veneta is not too far off, and Buyan is roughly the opposite side from Veneta. So I'm just waiting for it to go back around here. Yeah, so I'd say Veneta is about 11 o'clock, and Buyan was maybe like 5. If we're saying that. High mat is 12. So let's try doing something with that information. Probably not the right room. I do hate, too, that they didn't just put these across from each other. We have to go all the way across this floor every time we want to try to figure this puzzle out. past those two. Clearly, I should have killed those two, because they're just going to be in my fucking way every time. At least it's sort of safe here. What key do we need for this? Administrator's key. Okay, that's probably what's going to be in here, considering it's in the administrator's room. Crap. 
Yep, I love having to do this. <laughs> I think the problem is that because I had read that killing too many enemies might affect your ending, I'm being a little more cautious about killing enemies than I would be otherwise. So, that is maybe making me hesitate where I wouldn't hesitate to kill these enemies. But it is super annoying to have to avoid them to get to the puzzle. Alright. So, can I turn high, Matt? Or is that... That is our fixed point. Okay, so I was right. That is going to be our 12 o'clock. So that means that Rot Front is... Well... It looks like we have less positions than we would on a clock, which might simplify this puzzle a little bit. Nope. That, like, there. That, like, there. Hmm. I'm fairly certain that Veneta is up here. And... Oh, you know what? I haven't actually pressed the button, so... <laughs> it's not going to tell me that I'm right unless I put it in the right position and then... Press the button. There we go. So I had it right the first time. So we get the administrator's key... And a book. You notice that the king in yellow that we found wasn't actually a book, it just had a, an opening in it. Shrine Diary. Okay, this is a long one, so buckle in. 8421D. So I guess this is his other diary, the one that he started in the notebook he found within the box. So he did get it open, now that I remember. And he just found a blank notebook inside. I've started yet another new diary. How time flies. The work is dull and monotonous as ever in Sierpinski, but a bright light illuminates my day. Today, I was invited to a meeting by Commander Falka, and she was as magnificent as ever. Another day passes. During my meeting with the Commander today, I felt the strangest sensation of familiarity as I sat with her. Sadly, our meeting was interrupted by an unexpected power outage. I've been feeling strangely paranoid these days. Never before have I felt so strongly the sensation of deja vu as I have these past few days. When I checked the pages of my diary today, I noticed that, for some inexplicable reason, I seem to have dated my previous entries with today's date. What an embarrassing mistake. Every day feels a bit like I've lived it before, and even stronger is the sensation that something is, somehow, just slightly out of place. Why is my diary filled with entries I cannot recall writing? Why are they all dated to today? Has the loss of my beloved commander finally gotten to my mind? Am I going insane? I fear what will happen to me if anyone finds out. I am alone in this. If they discover my notes, I'll be decommissioned too. Something is wrong. I can feel it. Is this really madness? When I read the pages of my diary, I recall events that never happened. A yesterday that never was, yet it feels as real as the one I actually experienced. This cannot merely be a defect of my mind. It feels as though in this room, I peer into another version of reality. How? I do not know. Perhaps I too have become sick like the others, without realizing. But I will not succumb. A slow accumulation of reproduction errors, a gradual corruption of information, a story misremembered, slowly morphing with each retelling, like genetic material mutating and evolving. Like the replica mine, Copied over and over from an aging template? I do not know. 
but I will find out. The answers lie below. I can feel it. Someone or something calls me from there in the mine. Well, time for us to find out ourselves what's down in the mine. Because we have the key. So finally, we can escape this place and these two. I don't think we left anything behind. I mean, there was that one full heal. But aside from that, I think I cleaned out these floors pretty good of materials that we need. Alright. Major progression point. We've reached the bottom of Serpinski. It's the mineshaft access elevator controls. If she is still alive, she is probably there. Take the elevator to the mine? I mean, they did say if any of the workers are still alive, they're going to be down in the mine. They also said that any of the gestalts who have been infected died very quickly. And we know that we're searching for a gestalt. Alright, chapter two. Here's Issa. What's she up to? I know you're here. I've done this countless times before. You don't belong here. Bet he hasn't done that before. Okay. Well, already things are weird because we seem to be in some kind of mine of basalt columns. Which people love to use as an indication that things are weird, even though they are a real <laughs> geological formation that exists in our world. But they're weird because you don't expect to see hexagons in nature. And so they are intriguing. Also, it's real big down here. Alright. So far, no sign of anybody. Living or otherwise. Here's the big mining tools that we were getting shot at with. High power mining lasers. They're too large and heavy for me to use. They are not designed for my model. Probably shouldn't leave the flashlight on, lest I alert any enemies that are down here. Oh, of course. No map data. This area definitely feels kind of the opposite of claustrophobic. It's so big and open that I'm worried there could be fucking enemies anywhere, whereas the hallways we've been in so far feel kind of safe and familiar because, you know, we, we know how to duck and dodge past enemies in them. Monofilament fiber. Diameter, under 2 nanometers average. Handle with care, risk of death. Monofiber will effortlessly cut through limbs and equipment in an instant. Always wear protective clothing. Do not touch monofiber without protective gear. Only handle in brightly lit places. Ah, cool. Super tiny wires that can slice you apart. I'm sure that won't be relevant at all. Alright, we got a save room here. Got a repair spray. How's my health looking? Good. We're still topped up from healing. Flare gun. Okay. So, that might actually be something that kills enemies permanently. Because it fires flares. Single shotgun for firing 26.5 millimeter emergency signal flare cartridges that incinerate targets. I wonder then, does it just use the regular flares as ammo? LP-265A Luke Luch pistol Leuke pistol? I don't know how you pronounce the L-E-U-C-H in German. While not meant for combat, can be used to set enemies on fire, incapacitating them and dealing a large amount of damage over time. 
So I'm guessing if we actually kill an enemy with that, it'll stay dead. Oh no, okay. It uses its own ammo type. So we haven't actually had a chance to use that revolver yet, or uh, a reason to, I suppose. How many shotgun shells do I have stored? Just one? Yeah, just one. So we can't rely on that. If we get into a boss fight, I'll probably want to use the revolver. There's the MNHR. Alina's Diary, 3. It's worse than I thought. Everyone has disappeared. I still haven't found any trace of Elster. It's as if she n had never been here. Something's wrong with the protectors, those that are still around. A guard spotted me earlier sneaking out of the medical wing, and she let out a monstrous scream as she chased after me. When I looked back, I saw her face, and now I can't forget. It looked like she'd been in some kind of horrible accident. So that would have been the first infected replica that she ran into. We haven't actually found out why their faces are all fucked up. They might have done that to themselves in the process of being infected. Oh boy. Okay, this leads to another zone. Uh, this is probably going to get a little tricky if there's no map. Unless this is a dead end over here. Because otherwise we had a door that goes up this way. We had a door that goes down. Hey, look, a mina. Ah, uh, hello. You're not a protector, are you? What brings you here? I'm Bio. If you're down here, you're probably looking for something. I'd help you, but one of my hydraulics failed and I can't move. I'm pretty much done for, so you can just leave me here. There's no point repairing an old unit like me, so don't worry about it, okay? I'd be a waste of resources. I'd offer you my mining laser, but I don't think your frame could supply the power output. You're probably better off using a gun. There should be some useful equipment in the mining office. It's just south of here. Don't worry about me. There are many replacements. We're just replicas after all, right? In the end, what's one drop to an ocean? When I die, they'll just make another. Thank you for talking to me. I hope you find what you're looking for. I do wonder, could we actually give her healing items? Because that might also potentially affect an ending. Let's do a little experiment here, and then try to guess if... <laughs> oh no, I already had a repair spray, so yeah, I guess I couldn't give it to her? I don't have any repair patches, so I can't try that. We still have that eternity plate. I'm sure that'll come in handy someday. That's defective. That's not a door. Time to descend even deeper. I am on alert and ready for any kind of trouble. There's probably going to be a boss fight down here, and if so, I am not prepared for it. Okay. Got a lot of enemies in here. Probably just supposed to run past them. Oh boy. Oh boy, that's an infected mina. So I didn't actually press the button, it just started opening on its own. 
But I think we just need to, to wait until the door is all the way open. Can't go in there until it's completely open. Otherwise, it's not safe. That's cool. I wanted to read what that says, but fuck me, I guess. Alright, we'll leave them on another loop. Oh, there's health right here. Take that. She's doing her blood thing. Uh, which is kind of in my way. The shaft inside the hatch is slightly angled. It looks safe to slide down. Slide down, yes. <laughs> Probably not that important. Okay, so we went down an elevator, and then we went down into an even deeper shaft. I mean, I guess the map didn't exactly say how deep the mine goes. There's an even bigger hole. It's just like in Silent Hill when you jump down a series of holes in order to get somewhere else. See, it's worth looking around, because there's some healing items. My health is not great. But I think I'll hold on to my repair spray until we get hit again. Is that ammo? A little bit of pistol ammo. Alright. It was worth the minor detour, but... There's not a lot there. So now I guess we jump into the hole that was digged into the earth. There's a huge hole in the ground. I can hear the sound of water from below. It looks like there's no other way. Jump into the hole? Sure. Okay, a timer, and we're in first person, again. Hmm, I believe this is the island that we saw in the photograph. Along the shore, the cloud waves break, the twin suns sink redacted. The shadows lengthen. The night where black stars rise and strange moons circle through the skies, but stranger still. Song of unsung as tears unshed shall dry and die. It calls me in a sea of flesh. We will become one, but I can never go back to being me. There was something in here. I kind of assumed it would let me crouch. It's just out of reach. All right. I think that was also the book. Watch, there's gonna be like a a stick or something on the complete opposite end of the beach. 
I can't sprint or anything here, by the way. We can only move at a very slow pace. Oh, our time on this shore is running out. Alright, well, I have a feeling we'll be back there again. Now we've got a shaft full of very dead replicas. I assume these are replicas because they have kind of metallic structure to them. Hmm. Yeah, this is a great place to end up. Rusted surgical tools. They're not much use to me. Lifeless replica bodies are lying on the slabs. I had a lot of repair spray. I mean, this place looks real old. We got a blood red note. We got some kind of thing to inspect. And we've got an auto injector. Offerings. And in the darkness, the dead shall be offered. A light and holy spices so that they might find a way out of this cursed place. A small cup filled with sand for placing offering stands in front of the ancestral shrine. Ancestral tablets are lined up against the wall. The names are illegible due to wear. All right, well, if we want to get out of this cursed place, we'll need an offering. Hmm, thought we'd have to carve it out of one of these corpses. Okay, yeah, they don't have anything for me. But this does seem like a facility that probably predates Sierpinski. And maybe they dug it up by accident? And it says we're placing offerings, but we don't have anything to offer. I would say that this is where we need Eternity. That plate we picked up, but we don't have that. Oh, there's a door here. Do we have a map in this area? No. So, I can't even find the doors that are kind of hidden. I think the lantern indicates there's a door. See how each of them has a lantern above it? Ammo. Hair patch, I'm gonna use that. Save our good healing. It unlocks from the other side. What I need to do is find a save point in here. Large wooden doll. Well, that does sound like an offering. Oh boy. This is just a whole new area. One with no map. Alright, found a save point. Which is good, because we're going to wrap up. I think we made some significant progress by getting down here, even if half of the episode was me just looking for posters. Well... Eventually, we're going to be, I think, pretty set for combat <laughs> with all these like healing items and stuff we've been finding. And ammo. Because I've been uh, holding on to some ammo for a while now. Leave. Leave. Okay, this looks like a cipher that we can use to solve something else.
I want to check something here. We were told about this a while ago. That we could combine one of these with one of these. Yeah, and that makes the instant medium heal. Okay. Got a keypad like the one we saw in the cryo room back on the ship, which may have not actually happened. Or we might have been on that ship for a very long time. So, thank you for joining me for another episode of Signalis. It might not have been the most eventful one, but we certainly hit a major progress point and finally left that section of floors behind. So, next time is all going to be new as we explore this old-ass facility that seems to have been buried underneath the new one. So until the next time, you folks all take care.